Hello, beloveds. Welcome subscribers. Welcome new subscribers for subscribing to the channel, uh, supporting the channel. Uh, I found some really great information to really confirm some of the things that I have been talking about that the ancient mothers have been revealing to me. See, all of this stuff is starting to come out now. Uh, and this Bill Carson, he's a very interesting uh, mouthpiece for the patriarchs. Again, because when I hear him speak, he is speaking on the patriarchs. And it's very interesting how he tells his story and he skips right over this invasion of Egyptian, this matriarch culture. He goes on to explaining um, how these Anunnaki come in and they enslave these. Again, they are the one who created men. We are the angels. Like I told you, you can see that when and you can see that in Egypt, when you first look at Aset, she has the wings. We are the angels. There was no men here like that. We wasn't having inter uh, uh, sex like that with them. Okay, they, these people were created. These were created people. And like I said, I like I think Sumer again. I think like I said, I I, I thought Sumer was always a part of Egypt. But he, like Sumer is going by this, this different name now. But I bet you in the ancient world, it was uh, where the ancient patriarchs of Egypt were at. And they moved over to Egypt, okay, to where the matriarchs was and destroyed their civilization and took that power source because you see them leaving with the pay, uh, that power source from Egypt. But this is very interesting information. I want you to watch this video clip and then I'll go back in and then I will narrate parts, uh, the things that I'm talking about where I feel like they are hiding things. There is a conspiracy here. I would jump in here and uh, like I said, they're telling the story, but they're not telling the whole entire story. Uh, they, they are not talking about our cosmic mothers the galactic beings on this planet, okay? This is an outside source that's given men, again, this leverage to rule over the divine feminine spirit that governs this planet. So let's just watch this clip and, and uh, we'll come back in and we'll discuss it. The flood, they put the EGG. The EGG, according to these tablets, were the working class people. They worked and mined the land and create structures and cities and everything else, but they worked for 200,000 years and they got tired of working according to the tablets. So we, they were so pissed off, they were so angry, the conditions were harsh, they felt like they were being converted into slaves. And so they had a coup and they decided to go against the kings of Earth. After the flood, they decided to utilize this new tinker genetically modified version of a Homo sapien sapien. They started this project of capturing hominids and tinkering with their DNA. And they started off with this cloning system at first. So Isis says, I have an idea. She says, I'm going to take an egg from one of the women. And they took the egg and she cleaned out some of the genetic material or whatever they did. They made a zygote. They added some of their essence to the egg. They say essence, I think that's genetic modification in my understanding. They took this zygote, which is what you call a modern science. They put it in her womb. She took it to term 10 months, not nine, 10 months and then you see her in this famous cylinder scroll holding up this baby saying, my hands have created it. She gave birth to the Adamu, which means first man. And they, so they put Adam in this Eden, E-D-I-N. The guy who ruled over Eden was Satan, the Lord of Eden in the tablets. And that was actually Enlil. And the Bible calls him Yahweh. They think he's God. That guy's just masquerading as God. It was never God. And this Eden was this laboratory where they would have these mating rituals between the different peoples and they got when they got Adam in there they tried to mate him with these other ones wasn't working out so they said okay let's take some DNA from him let's make another one of him they made Eve then they mated them and bingo it worked crazy story that was about 200,000 years ago they also genetically modified us by taking chromosome number two out of our body fusing it together and putting telomere caps on each end to limit our lifespans and scientists now geneticists at universities they teach this they say, we don't know how this happened. It's an artificial mutation that would have taken millions of years to happen, but it happened about 200,000 years ago. So the tablets line up with modern science once again. And so it's the foundation of a high level civilization. 
when we got to one of the highest advanced civilizations, which started out in Sumer and then migrated over into the land of Kemet before it became Egypt, the initial pharaohs would be a direct bloodline of one of these Anunnaki people. When they relocated home base to the land of Kemet, they rebuilt the land of Kem out of the mud because there was a great flood. So we're talking about ancient knowledge. They began to create these mystery schools at this dawn of this new era 36,000 years ago. The gentleman who started this, his name was Thoth, T-H-O-T-H. And he's Cream that all these things be chipped away everywhere you go. Chip away the faces, chip away the ears. That's why he was kicked out of Egypt. He went to the Great Pyramid and he went to that stone box area inside the King's Chamber and took Ark of the Covenant with him. See, Akhenaten is Moses. That's the Moses story. The people that were this exodus that left out of Egypt, they were the people who converted from believing in multiple gods to believing in the one god religion, monotheism, following Akhenaten. And he fled with all these people out of Egypt with the Ark of the Covenant. And that's why the powers that be sent an army after him. They're like, you took the source of our power with, with you. We got to have that. They end up in the desert with the Ark of the Covenant, which is well noted and documented in biblical text. A super advanced technological machine. It was multi-purposeful. We know this because uh, of the way that it's designed and what it reads, you know, what it says. What it was capable of doing it's a weapon but it also has the capability of being a power source so it does multiple things and to handle it you had to have these special kind of boots on because it was a capacitor and some scientists at several universities experimented with recreating the arc and it actually turned on there was more than one arc they've all been taken now so nobody knows where they are the last one that we knew of was in ethiopia and that was the last one known of that was publicly available the rest are probably in some type of a military bunker the great pyramid itself is a power generator it was built on top of an aquifer and the water running underneath the great pyramid would run underneath in that aquifer would then run right underneath the solid granite magnetized granite that was there crystal granite it creates physiostatic electricity those ions would get pushed up into the uh, Grand Gallery and they had used to have resonating rods in the slots going up the Grand Gallery. When it got to the King's Chamber, some other type of you know fusion would happen and it would then send the energy up through the apex and the apex, which is now missing, would then transmit it out wirelessly to the obelisk, which then, which then collect this ambient electricity. And if you had a jet, you can pick up this ambient wireless electricity you can see the jet connected to light bulbs and so forth like a Nindera. And so Nikola Tesla copied that same energy power technique with the Warden Cliff Tower. What they realized was we can take this arc, they made this makeshift granite box, which is not a sarcophagus, because I can't even fit in, I'm six foot four. I knew it wasn't a sarcophagus, but it's the same exact, I measured it, it's the same exact dimensions as what? The Ark of the Covenant. So when Akhenaten took that, he took the power source for Egypt. As time continued to go by and, and, and cultures and the way that the economics and the civilizations and the kingship and everything changed, they began to then, for whatever reason, handpick specific people to do specific things and they would then create these genetically modified or bloodline people. Yeshua was one of them. He was a chosen one for whatever the full mission was. And I think the real mission was to bring a certain level of Christ consciousness, which existed before Jesus Christ that terminology ever came to be. The first baptism that was taught is in the Emerald Tablets. He talks about being baptized via elevated consciousness. Being able to rise up to another level and look back to see where you were before, and you'll be born again many times in one lifetime if you continue to ascend. I put the New Testament where Jesus is speaking, and I put both the Atlanteans' words from the Emerald Tablets, and you see that Jesus is literally mimicking what he learned from the ancient mystery schools which he learned directly from the Egyptian mysteries from both the Atlanteans' teachings. The real text is 36,000 years old. It's just a mimicking of ancient text. And a lot of different... ...religions cropped out. out of his spiritual writings that he wrote 
literally mimicking what he learned from the ancient mystery schools, which he learned directly from the Egyptian mysteries from both the Atlanteans' teachings. The real text is 36,000 years old. It's just a mimicking of ancient texts, and a lot of different religions cropped out of his spiritual writings that he wrote in those animal tablets. I believe that Jesus, his real name is Yeshua. First of all, he was a real person that did exist. I've been to the house where he grew up in Egypt, because if you remember in the Bible, Jesus disappears from the Bible at the age of 12. He's gone. Where does he go? The gospel of the Holy 12, which was left out of the Bible, has the answer. He goes to Egypt. I've been there. If you go to Coptic Cairo, you can go to the house where Jesus and his mother lived. He was learning the Egyptian mysteries. From there, he went all the way up into Tibet to learn Reiki healing and Qigong. And then he left from there and went down into India to learn the mystic arts, teaching reincarnation all the way back to Egypt. And then the Bible picks up, I call my son out of Egypt. And then you see him appear on the don back of a donkey in Jerusalem at the age of 32. Christ's consciousness is ancient, it's super ancient. And it's a certain level of consciousness that you, a person can get to this level where they're all knowing, all loving, they're, they're the epitome of service to others and unconditional love for, for one another. You know, a real true ascended being. And Jesus never said he was gonna return, he said that Christ would return and raising everyone up to a high level and bringing back a new golden age. See, the real reason why men was created because men was created to, both, to basically oppress the woman and damage the woman because women don't need men to create babies. But when men was created, men was designed to have sex with the woman. So that case, the man can put his image in a, in a woman instead of having her pure energy image. This is the reason why when they created the man, they say, let's create man in our image. They didn't say, let's create one man in our image. They said, let's create man in our image. Because when the Nephilims created man, they created Adam or Abdu, whoever you want to call, in their image. Because the woman was already there. So when they created Adam, Eve was already there, as y'all want to say. Because the whole Adam and Eve story is so fabricated. But when they started having sex with these, these angels, they created the man that had their DNA in them. And when the man started having sex with the angels, he put his sperm in the angel. Mind you, the, the angel don't know nothing about sex. The angel had very from energy. So when the man stuck his, his penis in the woman, she started bleeding crazy, going through pain. Why you think we have periods? Why you think we bleed every month? That doesn't come from no fucking Adam and Eve. That's a lie. That whole story is a lie. The real reason why women and girls bleed, because that's a reminder of what we went through when we first got here. When they invaded us, they raped us. We, we, our womb was not, our womb was created to hold an energy being, not, not beings that come out of our vagina. We didn't, we never used our vaginas at all, only to pee. And every time we peed, we peed in the grass because our pee actually made the grass grow because our urine was neutralized because we were one with the earth. Everything we do, all of our flesh is to come out of us. Uh, you can see where the deception is in here. I think that's very important because these men have a very fancy way of telling these stories and leaving gaps out. So I'm going to jump in here as he tell this story since you have already watched it without any narration. So you had a chance to see it for yourself. Now I'm going to narrate it. And so he's calling these new XY men uh, the Ajiji. This is the, the, I guess that is the scientific name for these beings that they have created to be slaves for them. Now you have these things coming into e they're coming into Egypt. Egypt is a major art culture. These things come in and they are looking to replicate themselves. So they create this EGG. Okay. And so they enslave this EGG, you know, and th again, this was not us. Again, this was an invasion that happened to us. And these men were created. Okay, so let's let's move on. They work and mine the land and create structures and cities and everything else. But they worked for 200,000 years and they got tired of working according to the tablets. So we, they were so pissed off. They were so angry. The conditions were harsh. They felt like they were being converted into slaves. And so they had a coup. And they decided to go against the kings of Perth. After the flood, they Now, see, that's a lie. They did not decide to go against the kings in the earth. What happened there is that they thought that they was going to take over that matriarch structure 
after, you know, I don't, was some type of disagreement happened. The matriarch was just like, no, they did not go over to take over the kings in the world, in the world because the kings, the patriarchs didn't get set up until after they overthrew the matriarchs. There was no, no kings like this. This is a matriarch planet. Okay, let's get the, the indigenous people on here were mat were matronial. Okay, so he's telling her, oh, they went to over uh, overthrow the king. No, they did not. No, they did not. They went to destroy the matriarch empire, the divine feminine influence that's on this planet. That is the cosmic energy on this planet. It is a divine feminine energy. And the only people who can embody this in energy is the angels, are the women, because we are truly the angels. Okay, we, we were asexual beings. Okay, we are truly the angels. They they came in and invaded us because they could not replicate themselves. Again, uh, we'll go on with them because these are lower beings. They had not reached this type of uh, of spiritual or metaphysical um, technology or e evolved or growth. They hadn't reached that yet. Okay, so we have them invading our planet, not able to replicate themselves, and we're helping them trying to replicate themselves so they can get the hell away from us. Trying to utilize this new tinker genetically modified version of a homo sapien sapien. They started this project of capturing hominids and tinkering with their DNA. And they started off with this cloning system at first. So Isis says, I have an idea. She says, I'm going to take an egg from one of the women. And they took the egg. And she cleaned out some of the genetic material or whatever they did. They made a zygote. They added some of their essence to the egg. They say essence. I think that's genetic money. Okay, so he said essence. He's going to try to minimize it. I think essence. He talk, I think that's genetic material. No, you wouldn't be a man. The man would be crazy. You wouldn't even be sitting here having this conversation without her uh, giving her egg. Okay, because her egg is the very essence of life. See how he try to minimize that? That's why I say, I really think they know what they're doing. And I'm very, you know, very suspicious of Bill Carson. When I hear a man talk about the story of humanity and his mouth is moving, he is not being forthcoming. You know, like the ancient mothers has told me, they're not going to tell this story right. They're only going to tell it from their perspective. That's why it's very important for women, us, to band together and tell our own story. You know, I, I you know, I, I like Bill Carson. I think some of the information he brings is good. But when I look at this, I can see some of the deception in what he's telling us, beloved. And you see here, I said she was the first one here. He's going to skip over all of this. He's going to skip over all of this and manufacture this story uh, where these patriarchs began to take over. See, they're not telling the cruelty and what happened to us when they came in and invade and when they were created. Okay, I digress. Let's move on. Location in my understanding. They took this zygote, which is what you call a modern science. They put it in her womb. She took it the term 10 months. She nine. put it in she her womb. In. You see her in this famous cylinder scroll holding up this baby saying, my hands have created it. She gave birth to the Adam. She gave birth to king. man, to, to so the first man. Eden, e -D -I -N, the guy who ruled over Eden was Satan, the Lord of Eden in the tablets. So you see them coming here, setting up this laboratory, creating this XY chromosome man. I have to call him XY because I don't want you to humanize him. I want you to know that he was cloned and he was created. It's, 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 it's very important that we understand who he is. Okay, he was he is not from this planet. He is a, not a galactic being of this planet. Again, can we live in harmony with them? Absolutely. Can they rule? Can we live in harmony with them? Uh, live uh, with them ruling? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We cannot live in harmony with them ruling. Absolutely not, because they are not the galactic caretakers of this planet. They are not the cosmic beings of this planet. Women are. Women are the original cosmic beings of this planet. And I said it louder for the people in the back. Okay, so let's move forward. And that was actually in Lil. And the Bible calls him Yahweh. They think he's God. Again, we have these out, out, outside sources. Eden, coming in where they would have these mating rituals between the different peoples and they got when they got Adam in there they tried to mate him with these other ones wasn't working out so they said okay let's take some DNA from him let's make another one of him they made Eve then they mated them and bingo it worked crazy story that was about 200,000 years ago 
They also genetically modified us by taking chromosome number two out of our body, fusing it together, and putting telomere caps on each end to limit our lifespans. And scientists now, geneticists at the universities, they teach this. They say, we don't know how this happened. It's an artificial mutation that would have taken millions of years to happen, but it happened about 200,000 years ago. So the tablets line up with modern science once again. And so it's the foundation of a high-level civilization. And these tablets, you know, again, they got a lot of this, 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 uh, technology again this this let you know that women were very advanced just as advanced as these things that was coming here because they was able to use their technology with their technology so uh that technology was already in the egyptian uh uh matriarchs they already had the you know like i said they were already going to the moon uh i'm gonna talk a little bit about that too if i can find some more information on it but they were already going to the moon. They already had their spaceships. They had uh, power sources here that would take them anywhere. Again, these are galactic cosmic beings. They had already uh, begun to evolve and to elevate themselves in consciousness. Men have not did this. This is what this era is about, about them evolving their consciousness because, they're, again, they're operating in their lower chakras, the lower three chakras. They're the one have to elevate their consciousness. This this story is about them. It's not about women. It never was about. And matter of fact, we need to get out their way because they're very dangerous. When we got to one of the highest advanced civilizations, which started out in Sumer and then migrated over into the land of Kemet before it became Egypt, the initial pharaohs would be a direct bloodline of one of these Anunnaki people. When they relocated home base to the land of Kemet, they rebuild the land of Kem out of the mud because there was a great flood. So we're talking about ancient knowledge. They began to create these mystery schools at this dawn of this new era 36,000 years ago. The gentleman who started this, his name was Thoth, T-H-O. -T -H. Okay, so now you got him lying about Thoth. Again, this again, they're injecting this Thoth again. Really, these writings come from the ancient mother. They come from our ancient mothers who wrote this stuff. Okay, they may have replicated it in their documents, but a lot of this stuff was already written down in Egypt. Again, we got some hijacking going on here. We got some deception going on here. Okay, this is just like that 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 mimic of Jesus a little bit. Okay, even this Jesus is a replicate. Again, this is about man's story trying to re reach a higher consciousness because. He came from a lower, wherever he is, whoever created him. He his job is to evolve his consciousness because he was created. He was he was cloned from a lower being. This is his story, beloved. Okay, this is his story. But he here he talks about thought, and I'm just like, huh, huh. And then he tried to contribute it to America and all, you know all of that. And again. We're kind of kind of skipping over the fact that these pyramids over here is older than the ones in Africa, and he's putting us back in Africa again. So I digress. Let's move on. Okay, that's the end of it. We'll move on to the next one. Okay. Uh, here he's talking about uh, Ashkenaten, uh, a.k.a. Moses, getting kicked out of Egypt. Okay, so he's talking about this. So, I'm, again, I'm going to narrate this. Again, he's telling you they got kicked out of Egypt. See, he's telling parts of the story because he because some of this has been recorded. So it's some truth he has to bring to this. But again, it's still deception up in here. And I'm going to call it out. I'm going to call it out because no longer a man is going to sit here and tell our story and just write us up out of it. Because again, even with all this insight and stuff that he got, I'm just disappointed at Bill Carson and how he writing, uh, how he's doing this. You know, I, I just, again, these patriarchs, they are working hard. They are working hard to keep that information out. They are working hard to do that. So let's, 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 let's continue. Green, that all these things be chipped away everywhere you go. Chip away the faces, chip away the ears. That's why he was kicked. Why he was chipping, why was he chipping away the faces and the ears? Because they said that he, he changed into a monotheistic, uh, trying to go into the monotheistic religion. 
So he started destroying some of the faces of the artifacts there in Egypt. Out of Egypt, he went to the Great Pyramid and he went to that stone box area inside the King's Chamber and took Ark of the Covenant with him. See, Akhenaten is Moses. That's the Moses story. The people that were this exodus that left out of Egypt, they were the people who converted from believing in multiple gods and believing in the one God religion. Mono okay, so did, didn't I tell you, but see, they didn't know they God because Moses, again, he learned from here. He, again, it's this Akhenaten. Remember I told you, them people, they broke away. He's let, they let you know he was a part of the Egyptian empire. The people broke away. They was the broke breakaway people. Okay, I told you them people, they lived with it. These people, we, we did not enslave these, these people. Okay, they, these people were not slaves. Okay, these people left her uh, taking stuff, and they took the Ark of Covenant, which I told you that uh, that the ancestors told me that we had power sources all over this planet. We had indigenous power sources when it came to trees, when it came to mountains, and then we had other power structures that we had created uh, for our colonies to energize our colonies as well. So he's letting you know that, hey, they was they was taken out with the... Following Akhenaten, and he fled with all these people out of Egypt with the Ark of the Covenant, and that's why the powers that be sent an army after him. They're like, you took the source of our power with, with you. We can See, th that's when the matriarchs just like, oh, no, nah, you, you, you still it. See, they left their still, and they, put, they write that in their Bible. These people telling you who they are. But they try to act like they're victims. This is what narcissism, this is what patriarchy does. He's, he's telling the story to make it seem like he's a victim, but really he's the villain. He's taking things. He was trying to run the matriarchs. He was trying to take that over. They were trying to take that over. And I think, again, these are bits of stories that this man is telling. And I was only able to grab so much to bring it here and share with you to show you some of the deception that's going on and to also show you that there's truth to the story that I've been telling you and that I'm not rewriting history, that patriarchs are rewriting it. They have they started it first. They started rewriting history first. So don't blame that on me because I'm uncovering it back and exposing it. I got to be re rewriting history. But this man is totally rewriting history before our eyes here. He's totally... You know, he's totally focused on the patriarch history and totally burying the matriarch history. You gotta have that. They end up in the desert with the Ark of the Covenant, which is well noted and documented in biblical text. A super advanced technological machine, multi-purpose. Well, we know this because uh, of the way that it's designed and what it reads, you know, what it says. Of course, and because y'all spent a lot of time in Egypt and, and y'all saw how we use that power source. Again, you got these Abraham, Abrahamic religions, again, these ma patriarchs stealing the power source from the matriarchs. And it actually turned on. There was more than one arc. They've all been taken now, so nobody knows where they are. The last one that we knew of was in Ethiopia, and that was the last one known of that was publicly available. The rest are probably in some type of a military bunker. The Great Pyramid itself is a power generator. It was built on top of an aquifer, and the water running underneath the Great Pyramid would run underneath in that aquifer. Would then and see, I want to stop him here because what I noticed too by the mounds, especially the Toltec mounds here where I live at, the ancestors already told me that those mounds pick up energy off the current to power the mounds. So when you see mounds that's built by a water so a source, know that a lot of healing ceremonies uh, went on and that there is a power source there to, uh, to those mounds. They use the currency of water to generate power. Yes, ma'am. And it, again, he's confirming everything the ancestors have told me. I haven't read any books on, on, on a lot of this stuff. A lot of these insights and stuff, because I have uh, done the work on myself and and, and, and and constantly in contact with the ancestors, they give me these downloads. And I can't, I don't share them until I run into information confirming what they have told me. And it never fails every, every time. I, I run into information where they confirm that this is true. I, I digress. We're moving on. Underneath the solid granite, magnetized granite, that was their crystal granite, it creates physiostatic electricity. Those ions would get pushed up into the uh, Grand Gallery, and they had used to have resonating rods in the slots going up the Grand Gallery. When it got to the King's Chamber, some other type of you know fusion would happen, and it would then send the energy up through the apex, and the apex, which is now missing, would then transmit it out wirelessly 
to the obelisk, which then, which then collect this ambient electricity. And if you had a jet, you can pick up this ambient wireless electricity. You can see the jet connected to light. This the Tartarian there. technology so that women had. This is the Tesla. They like to give it to Tesla, but this is the Tartarian uh, technology that women had because we knew the energy of this planet. We were very intelligent beings. power source for Egypt as time continued to go by and, and, and cultures and the way that the economics and the civilizations and the kingship and everything changed, they began to then, for whatever reason, handpick specific people to do specific things and they would then create these genetically modified or bloodline people. Yeshua was one of them. Okay, this when you come up with the black nobility. They start creating the black nobility. These Moors start creating the black nobility. You know, that's when you see uh this black black nobility come into play and then you start to see them genetically modify uh uh these beasts you know those people beasts in the caucus mountain you start to see a lot of that genetic all that genetic stuff start to go on there okay so i wanted to come in here and explain that to you so once they 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 leave here they begin to continue to genetically modify and be very particular about how they marry because again these entities they want to replicate themselves they want to stay as pure as possible so they're being very careful on how they pass over their genetics because it was very hard for them to replicate themselves okay they needed us to do it and they don't they, they don't have a chance to go back and do that again Okay, so they have to be careful in how they are passing on their ge genetics, which makes sense uh, for a, a, a species that's having a hard time maintaining their genetics in existence. They have to be careful with how they're passing on their genetics. Okay. He was a chosen one for whatever the full mission was, and I think the real mission was to bring a certain level of Christ. Now, Christ when they when he's talking about Jesus and he's talking about Christ consciousness. And again, I talked about this in my live, my TikTok live. These being was born on a loyal survivor level. They only, uh, they only, the men now, they still, they can only uh, act out of their three chakras, lower three chakras, okay? They can only act out of those three chakras. And the only chakras that they can, uh, that's the root chakra that deals with survival, okay? That's the sacral, uh, then you got the sacral chakra, okay that deal with the sex okay with mating and then you have the sol solar uh plexus because it ain't gonna go no higher than that it's not gonna go no higher than that they don't gonna that deals with the will the will to live okay so they're only gonna be acting out those three chakras there and so they have this christ they have created this christ consciousness this story is about them like i told you it's never is about the us this is about man elevating his consciousness because he's sitting here telling you right there. He's sitting up here telling you, they telling you without telling you. That's, I, I love she was seven because she said they tell you uh, uh, who they are without telling you who they are. He's letting you know that they need to evolve and that this Christ consciousness is this Christ thing. Like I said, it's not a person. It's a consciousness. This Christ consciousness is about him evolving his consciousness and uh, uh being able to embody uh that divine consciousness and that uh that feminine that divine feminine spirit and this is after years and years of evolution years and years of evolution if he's and not many are going to rise into that higher consciousness not many are going to do that work but again because the way they were cre created and genetically modified so let's go i digress that terminology ever came to be the first that was taught is in the emerald tablets he talks about being baptized and see the, these uh, emerald tablets i really want to know where these emerald tablets come from because doing my research and doing uh re reading the uh, african prophetess unveiled by mama sogby all these these writings came from the civil the prophetess and they went back and they copied all of them okay they copied all these, all you, all them, them, them proverbs and psalms and stuff that you see in the Bible are the books of wisdom, Ecclesiastes. All that writing came from women. It did not come from men. He's telling you right. They did not have. They did not have. Uh, they could not embody that. And us matriarchs was trying to teach them to embody that. 
we were trying to teach them how to divide the to uh, embody divine feminine. That's why we got different religions now because patriarchs took that over because they didn't know how to embody that. They wanted to dominate, they used that to dominate the planet because women, we had our own spiritual metaphysical essence here on this planet. And they knew that. And they used that to their advantage to dominate us and to invade this planet. That's what you have there. That's why you have most women supporting a lot of these religions. And them are fakers of the religion a lot of them are fake they're not true to it they're not a lot of them not devoted and committed to it i do Chris, move on being able to rise up to another level and look back to see where you were before and you'll be born again many times in one lifetime if you continue to ascend i put the new testament where jesus is speaking and i put both the atlanteans words from the emerald tablets and you see that jesus is literally mimicking what he learned from the ancient mystery schools in Egypt, the it's again, we got to go back to the matriarchs. The real text we got to go back to the matriarchs. Egypt, Egypt. 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 Okay, I have to digress here because it gets a little bumpy here uh, watching this because I'm trying to capture as much of this video as I can. But here he talks about Thoth and and you know, saying that Thoth wrote all of this. Again, they making up another man. You know, you're making up another person. Making this 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 another person. So you won't have to admit that women created these civilizations. That's what I see there. That's what I see. I see you cre I see you making up stuff so you won't have to admit that women create these civilizations because he contributed a lot of this stuff to Thoth. That's what he did. Okay. Uh, I just had to come here and share this information with you and grab it with you as much information as I could share with you. Uh, like I said, I like Bill Carson. I like some of his information here, but this right here was very deceiving and deceptive. And I had to show come here and show women is do not get caught up see a lot of these men and they and they mostly put men they they mostly put men uh in charge of this type of stuff i don't see them um supporting women that's why women we got to we got to get organizations and institutions for us and we need to do our own talking okay i don't see too many women having this discussion only men trying to have a chalk talk of humanity and you don't you're not even from this planet you were created you're not even from this planet and that's the truth okay beloved you have seen this for yourself i have broken this down for you uh i hope this was insightful for you and, and it really caused you to think it really caused you to think you know i had to bring this here so you can see this for yourself you know Thank you for being here with me today. Light, love, namaste, ashe, love one.